Thank you very much. Thanks very much for giving your time. It's brilliant. All right, it's my yeah. pleasure. Yeah. Are we recording? Right. If you could just say who you are, what you did for Apollo. My name is Alan Bean. I was uh, at that time Captain Alan Bean. I was lucky enough to be the lunar module pilot on Apollo 12, so I became the fourth man to walk on the moon. After that, I flew in Skylab, a commander of Skylab 2. And so I had a really wonderful career at NASA. I was there 18 years as an astronaut, and I'm an artist now, so painting my experiences. That's fantastic. Um, on um, Skylab, is there any sense of the Soviets had the Salyut space stations at the time? Was there any sense of competition with, with them over um, you know, endurance days in orbit? Absolutely. I think uh, we had competition with the Russians right from the beginning, particularly since they were well ahead of us at the beginning. We were constantly trying to catch up, never were able to do it. And that's why uh, President Kennedy said, let's go to the moon. Maybe this will give us a chance to catch up. And in fact, it did. It got us a chance to pull ahead. Then they began the Salute Space Station, and we got Skylab. But it was always, a, I always felt it was a friendly competition when we would meet cosmonauts at international air shows, like the ones here at Farnborough. Well, we would, you know, want to talk with them and ask them what they were doing, and they wanted to talk with us and ask us what we were doing. And so we wanted to win, but we wanted to uh, uh, compete, and, and we wanted them to be successful. We wanted to be successful, too. Yeah, yeah. And, um on your, as the fourth man on the moon, during your EVAs there, um, I understand you had some issues with, uh, um, was water in the space suits, is that true? There's no, that's an interesting thing. We didn't uh, notice water in the spacesuit so much, but the first night after we got in, then we were sleeping, and all of a sudden the noise in the spacecraft changed. That was very scary because it wasn't supposed to. And we woke up and we talked to Mission Control and said, you know, something's changed in here, the noise level. They didn't know what it was. Later on they found out that we had sweated more than our suits than they thought. And that water was being uh, evaporated into the ship's system and enough water came in to slow down the separator and that's what we heard. So later missions they didn't want the crew to wake up and be scared and startled so they put a water separator in there. So these are the things that happen when you're on early missions and we were just on the second mission and we were out twice and did a lot of hard work and so that water and perspiration had come off us and was a problem for a little while. Yeah. And also on your mission there was a master alarm went off when you fired the ascent engine and uh, there was some issue. Oh, sorry. Well, we had an experience that uh, no crew should have, but when we launched, we launched into a thunderstorm because we didn't think that was a bad thing to do. turned out to be a bad thing to do because the uh, exhaust of a rocket is ionized, meaning it's conducting just like a wire. So when we went up into this thunderstorm cloud, we had like a wire going down to the ground, big lightning rod, so we got struck by lightning at about 50 seconds, it turned out a lot of caution and warning lights. We didn't know what had happened. Mission Control didn't know what had happened, but somebody at Cape Kennedy observed the lightning come down and hit the launch pad through the uh, column of exhaust. And he quickly radioed back to Mission Control and said, hey, I think maybe they were hit by lightning. They told us that, and when they did, then all these caution and warnings made sense to us. So. It was a scary moment, but uh, the team of uh, us, and particularly Mission Control and the people at the Cape Kennedy, worked together to find a solution to this. So it's like space flight. It's uh, not easy. People think that space flight is like flying uh, British Airways over the ocean. Forget it. It's not. It's uh, exploration. It's more like Captain Cook going down to the South Pacific. It's dangerous. It's hard to do. Sometimes we make it look easy. It never is easy. So uh, uh, it's uh, the sort of thing that adventuresome people should do. If you're not adventuresome, adventuresome and willing to risk uh, a lot of things going wrong, like Apollo 13 or Columbia or Challenger, it's not the line of work for you. Um, you were a backup commander for Apollo Soyuz test project. Absolutely, yeah. you work with the Russians. I like those yeah. cosmonauts. Yeah. Well, that's my next question. So, what was the experience working with the Russians on the 
It was great. Uh, the Russian cosmonauts and the people in the Russian spacecraft are just like us, except in a different culture. Now, in our culture, we've got a lot of freedom and we've got a lot of ability to make choices or say how we feel. They didn't have quite that much freedom. And so, as a result, I always felt like, boy, it would be nice if those guys could, they can now, probably, if they could just be a little more relaxed, you know, they had to be so careful about what they said. For example, we could say, boy, I like your television better than ours. They couldn't say, boy, I like your television better than ours, or I like your cars, those are nifty. They couldn't say that about us. So they had to be a lot more circumspect than we did. It was more difficult for them, but they're, uh, they're great uh, human beings too. Um, as you said, you felt the astronauts and the cosmos were very similar people. Do you think that's because to do the job, you have to be a certain type of person? I think that that's part of that. I think the same type of person that wants to be an astronaut or a pilot, don't forget all of us began to being pilots, that's what I wanted to be when I was a boy, just to be a pilot. They all wanted to do that too. Then along comes the space program and they become astronauts. So it's the kind of person that wants to do it. You know, certain people want to be in television. Yeah, certain uh, the world over. Certain people want to be lawyers. Certain people want to be prime ministers or politicians. You know, so that's why it's very. Uh, they're very compatible with us. I like them a lot. Very competent. Just as skilled. Just as smart. Just as everything. Just in a different country.